Hello once again. We have yet another sample question to go through. And uh, this time we have conversion of number systems. As you can see, this is a question 17 in one of our papers. And in the first question, A, we have 19.1875 base 10 to binary. So I'm going to show you the steps you will take to convert a decimal number to a binary number or the binary equivalent. So let's get to it. Now, of course, the first thing to do is you rewrite your number, base 10, and we are converting this to base 2. The binary system is base 2. So to convert such a number, we need to take care of the whole number and then we need to take care of the decimal point part or the fraction part. Now we will begin with the whole number part and to convert a whole number in decimal to binary, we repeatedly divide it by 2 as we note the remainders. So we will draw a small table like that and we are dividing by 2. So 2 goes into 19 9 times with a remainder of 1 because 2 times 9 is 18 and so 19 minus 18 is 1. That's the remainder. So we can say remainders. We draw a line there. 2 into 9 is 4 again with a remainder of 1. 2 into 4 is 2 with no remainder. 2 into 2 is 1 with no remainder. And we have to keep dividing by 2 until the quotient is 0. So 2 into 1, 2 is larger than 1. So the quotient is 0 and the remainder is 1. Now here we read our remainders in reverse order, which gives us 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. This is the equivalent of 19 base 10. So that is our first part of the answer. Now we proceed to work out the fraction part. And the fraction part is worked out now by multiplication as opposed to division. So we take 0 0.1875 5 base 10 we multiply repeatedly by 2 and we are going to be taking note of the whole number part of the products so grabbing our calculator we get the product of 0 0.1875 times 2 and the answer is 0 0.375 Now, the whole number parts are what we are interested in, but again, we will continue repeating the multiplication of the fraction part with 2 until the fraction part becomes 0 or it starts repeating. So we again come with our 0 0.375 times 2. And that gives us 0 0.75. Again, 0 0.75 times 2. Which gives us 1.5. We continue. 0 0.5. We are taking the fraction part only, remember. Times 2 gives us 1.5. Zero. So the fraction part has become zero, it has disappeared. So this is where we stop. And now, just like I said, we now consider our whole numbers from the products going downwards. Now the result for us from this is zero point. So we begin with zero point and then zero, zero, one, one. 
which is the equivalent of 0 0.1875 that's 10 so this is the second part of our answer so the last portion is to now take our first part this one and the second part this one and add them so 19 Point one eight seven five. This ten is now equal to, or equivalent to one zero zero one one, plus zero point zero zero one one. This two, and this addition gives us one zero zero one one point zero zero one one. This two, and that is our answer. So I hope you followed the steps. First one, work out the equivalent for the whole number by divide, dividing by 2 repeatedly until the quotient is 0 and then read your remainders backwards. The second step is work out the fraction part by multiplying it by 2 repeatedly until the fraction part of your products becomes 0 and then read your whole numbers from your products going downwards beginning with a 0 0.0011 and lastly combine the result the equivalent of the whole number and the equivalent of the fraction to arrive at your final answer hope that has been clear enough and we'll do something else in the next video hello once again now we move on to another question on the same paper from the previous video and this time we have a hexadecimal number that is base 16 being converted to the binary number system so follow along and let's see how it is done of course at first we need to notice that in the hexadecimal number system the digits begin from 0 up to 9 just like in the decimal number system and then we follow this with a up to f where a stands for 10 through to f standing for 15 so that is most important point to note when you are dealing with hexadecimal now we have a b base 16 being converted to base 2 that is binary now to convert a hexadecimal number to a binary number we are going to work out each digit from our hexadecimal number to its 4 bit binary equivalent so we are going to use 4 bits binary equivalents of each of these digits so let's begin a base 16 stands for 10 and so 10 being converted to binary assuming it is decimal you divide by 2 2 goes into 10 5 times without a remainder 2 goes into 5 2 times with a remainder of 1 2 goes into 2 1 time with no remainder and 2 into 1 cannot therefore the remainder comes to be 1 read this in reverse and 10 is this 10 is the equivalent to 1010 zero, one, zero, base 2 and we have to make sure we have 4 bits 1 2 3 4 so that is okay now move on to b and b is 11 in base 10 and so when we convert 11 to binary we get 2 going into 10 in 11 sorry 5 times with a remainder of 1 2 into 5 2 times with a remainder of 1 2 into 2 1 times with no remainder and 2 into 1 0 times with the remainder being 1 again read the remainders backwards and we arrive at a result where b is 
the equivalent to 1011 in binary. Again, make sure you have four bits. So we have one, two, three, four. That is correct. And so the last step is to combine the result you got for A and the result you got for B, beginning from the left. So A was one zero one zero while b was one zero one one so combining these two our final answer is one zero one zero one zero one one i hope you followed and it is clear that is it how you can convert hexadecimal numbers into binary numbers we shall do something else in the next video. Welcome once again. This time we move on to another question in the same paper we have been going through in the previous few videos. And the question reads, perform the twos complement on 13 best 10 minus 23 best 10, leaving your answer in decimal number system. So let's see how we can tackle such a question. Now, first of all, we need to understand the two's complement system of working. And uh, I advise candidates to always work out such a question in the 8-bit system. Now, our numbers or our sum is 13 base 10 minus 23 best 10. Now right away you notice that we are having a larger number being subtracted from a smaller number. Now we expect to get a negative result. 13 minus 23 we expect to get negative 10. Now in the question we are expected to leave our answer in the decimal number system the decimal number system is the same system in which the sum has been given. And so straight away, it means obviously our result has to be negative 10 base 10. And so as a good candidate, that should be your answer at the end of it all because we can obviously see the sum right there. That is what it should lead to. Now, whatever goes on in between here is what we want to see so that we understand how to move from this sum to this result going through the two's complement system. So, obviously, the two's complement system is a system which works with binary numbers. That is how computers deal with uh, signed numbers, especially negatives. And so it means we first have to convert our numbers into the binary system. Let's begin with 13, dividing it repeatedly by 2, and noting the remainders. 2 goes into 13 6 times with 1 as the remainder. 2 goes into 6 3 times with no remainder. 2 goes into 3 1 time with 1 remainder. And 2 into 1 is 0 with the remainder being 1. Reading them backwards as usual, 13 base 10 is equivalent to 1101 base 2. Next we work out 23 and 23 divided by 2, noting the remainders, 22, 2 goes into 23 11 times with a remainder of 1, 2 into 11 it's 5 times with a remainder of 1. 2 into 5 is 2 with a remainder of 1. 2 into 2 is 1 with a re no remainder. And 2 into 1 is 0 with the remainder being 1. Again, reading them in reverse. 23 base 10 is 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 base 2. So we now have our numbers in the binary system. We can rewrite that sum in its binary equivalent being 1101 minus 10111 one, 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 base 2. 
Now remember, 8-bit system. So let's write again our sum with each number having 8 bits. To do that, we will add zeros to the left of each number, which are insignificant, so they don't change the value of the number. So the first number having 4 bits will need 4 more zeros to make it 8 bits, minus the second number, the negative number, has 5 bits, so we need 3 zeros to make it 8 bits. Alright? Now from here, going forward, we deal with the negative number. We can even rewrite the sum as this, plus negative zero 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 one zero one 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 plus two so our negative number in the brackets is what we are going to convert into a two bit uh, into sorry into a two's complement version of it to get a two's complement you first have to get the one's complement and then next you add one to the one's complement so to get the ones complement, you change the zeros to ones and the ones to zeros. And therefore, zero, sorry, zero becomes one, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero to one, and the three ones to three zeros. This is the ones complement of that number. And then to get the twos complement, we add one at the rightmost position and so we get one zero zero one zero one 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 and this is now our twos complement all right now next step is we now take this twos complement and add it to our positive number so we have zero 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 one one zero one we are adding to that one 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 zero one zero zero one so one plus one gives you zero and we carry a one one plus zero plus zero is one 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 0, carry 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, and we have 1 and 1 and 1. Now this result, remember, is the result of subtracting a large number from a small number. And so now that we expect a negative, what happens from here is that we go ahead again and get the two's complement of this result. How do we do that? We change zeros to ones and ones to zeros and add one. So here we shall get zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one. And then we add one. So this is again a ones complement. When we add one to this, we get zero, carry one. 1, 0, 1. Of course, the rest are zeros. Now, here, we are arriving at a result 1, 0, 1, 0, base 2. And in this case, this is a negative. And so, being a negative, we can now convert 1, 0, 1, 0 to base 2 into decimal. And then, will have a negative sign before it. Now because I did not take care of my spacing, let me grab a blank paper on which I'll perform the rest of the steps to arrive at this answer. Remember, we have arrived at the result of adding the negative number having been converted to two's complement to the positive number. And then on that result, we have performed again a two's complement operation on it by converting zeros to ones and ones to zeros and then adding one. We have arrived at 
one zero one zero base two and I'm saying that is with a negative because that is what we expected and so the remaining step is just to convert one zero one zero base two into decimal now on this paper we have one zero one zero base two we need to convert this into decimal which is base 10 so how do we proceed space out your digits have two and then starting from the right going to the left put powers on the twos with starting with zero one two and three and what you do take this multiplied by that so two power zero times zero and bracket that this multiply by that 2 power 1 times 1 bracket that leaving some space take this multiply by that 2 power 2 times 0 with some space there and lastly that multiplied by that 2 power 3 times 1 in your spaces have addition signs and get the result of this so with the help of our calculator 2 power 3 is 8 now here because we are going to eventually multiply by 0 obviously the result for that is 0 as well as this 0 and so 2 power 1 is 2 times 1 is 2 and 8 plus 2 is 10 base 10 so our final result is negative 10 base 10. So that is a clear method of how the question needs to be handled. I hope that has been clear. We shall do something else in the next video.